In today's video, I want to tell you the 8 best ETFs that you can and should invest in in 2023 and I'm going to show you why these ETFs are, in my opinion, the best choice you can make right now if you want to grow your money in the long term. The stock market is down to the same level it was exactly two years ago. And although you can never know when a crisis ends, you can see that except for three cases, in 100 years, the market has never been down for more than two years in a row. And the best returns were always right before the crisis. So if you have a friend that says, I'll take my chances and buy individual stocks because Amazon grew 112,000% since 1997 and I want to find companies like this, well, as Jordan Peterson would say, Well, good luck with that. In fact, the average investor has proven to have a terrible record of returns compared to index fund investing. And in the last 10 years, even hedge funds, which are run by experienced fund managers, performed on average worse than the S&P 500 every single year and were even close to its performance. And if hedge funds on average can't perform better than index fund investing, we should humbly ask ourselves, why should we? On the other hand, let me show you how life looks like from the eyes of an ETF investor. The 20 year rolling stock market return tells you your average annual return for 20 years, depending on when you start investing, if you invest in the total stock market. So for example, you can see that if you invest for at least 20 years, you will always profit from the stock market. And the worst 20 years annualized return occurred in 1948, and it was just under 4% a year. Now this graph shows the probability of getting positive returns based on how long you stay invested. You can see that after one year you have a 73% probability, after two years 80, five years 90, and all the way up to 97% on the 10th year and 100% on the 20th. This simply implies the longer you stay invested for, the higher the chances you'll make money. But this is valid if you invest in the stock market as a whole, or as you can see in this table, if you invest in sector ETFs. For example, if you invested 10 years ago in the information technology sector ETF, you would have gotten an amazing 17% per year, followed by healthcare and by the S&P 500 as a whole. All that said, guys, let's get right into the ETFs of my list. And I'm going to focus on Vanguard ETFs because they have a really low expense ratio, which is basically the management fee that you pay yearly. But of course, you can choose also other providers like iShares, Invesco or State Street SPDR. OK, let's go. My number one is VO, otherwise known as the S&P 500 ETF by Vanguard, of which I talk so often that you might think that I get some kind of money from them. But unfortunately, I don't. The S&P 500 contains the largest 500 publicly traded companies in the US equity markets weighted by market cap and other factors. That means that you get the top of the top, the top guns of the American economy. Companies like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Berkshire Hathaway and Facebook. No, wait, where, where, where is Facebook? Page one, page two, page three. Oh, here it is. It got lost in the valley of death. So why is this ETF my absolute favorite? The S&P 500 offers the best and most optimized diversification of the entire stock market by picking the best companies from each sector. A committee from the investment company called Standard & Poor's, which I used to think looks like this, but instead is more something like this, selects the stocks based on profitability, market capitalization, sector allocation, liquidity. So there is an important vetting process of due diligence behind each choice that is basically the biggest gift you could ever receive as an investor. Because let's face it, we could never be as good as them. In the last 10 years, it gave 12.52% annual return, and it's also down over 18 percent year to date, which makes it cheaper to buy as it was exactly one year ago. The expense ratio is an embarrassing 0.03 percent, but if you want to reduce it even more, you could go for the competition. And Fidelity offers its own S&P 500 ETF that offers an expense ratio of just 0.015 percent. Basically, they're working for free. Now, before we go to number two, let me once and for all tell you something about the fees of an ETF that everybody gets wrong even famous YouTubers, and I kind of get mad when I hear that. When you find an ETF that has, for example, an expense ratio of 0.30%, Every YouTuber likes to say that it's just $30 for every $10,000 invested. So not a big deal, right? Wrong. Let's say that you invest $10,000 in an ETF that has an expense ratio of 0.30% and gives you 3% returns per year. The first year, you're going to earn $300, which is 3%, and you're going to spend $30, which is 10% of the $300 you earned, 10%. And this is gonna go on every year. So for example, one day, your portfolio is gonna be worth $100,000. And this ETF is gonna make you earn $3,000 in a year, which is still 3%. But now you're gonna pay $300 management fee, which is still 10% of the $3,000 you earned. 
So an expense ratio of 0.30% shouldn't be seen as a loss of 0.30%. Instead, it could be 5, 10, 15% that you lose every year from your earnings. My number two is VTI, which is really similar to the first one as performance, but includes over 4,000 companies instead of 500, basically the whole American stock market. This ETF performs in the long term almost identically to VO. In my opinion, there is almost no difference, except that the total stock market index fund is a little bit more diversified, so I would suggest you to just choose one of those and stick with it. Now, the total stock market ETF covers everything you could possibly think of, from materials to utilities to information technology, and all of this without complicating your life with stock analysis, graphs, and ratios. The expense ratio or management fee is a ridiculously low 0.03%, just like VO. But if you want to go around this, you could also go with the Fidelity Zero Total Stock Market Index Fund, which started in 2018 and for whatever reason has zero expense ratio. Yes, it looks like Fidelity is becoming more and more like a Santa Claus workshop. Number three is something a little more conservative that you can use if you want a bit more peace of mind and you want to start testing the beauty of passive income. I'm talking about VYM, Vanguard's High Dividend Yield ETF. This ETF tracks the performance of the FTS high dividend yield index that includes all companies that give you above average dividend yields. So if you buy this ETF that costs around $100, you're gonna get 442 great dividend companies, including the kings of safe dividends like Johnson & Johnson, ExxonMobil, JP Morgan, Chevron Corporation, and Procter & Gamble. So far it's given 3% dividends per year, and on top of this 3% passive income that you're getting for free for doing absolutely nothing while you play with your PlayStation, you also get stock appreciation. In fact, in the last 10 years, it gave an annualized return of 11.6%. If you're still not convinced, consider that for this ETF, Vanguard offers a really low expense ratio of 0.06% and that the biggest exposure belongs to the financial sector with over 20%, which is one of Buffett's favorite sectors. After getting the whole American stock market and the dividend kings in your portfolio, it's time for some growth. And for this, I have two ETFs in mind. The first is VGT, the Vanguard Information Technology ETF. This ETF has an expense ratio of 0.10% and comprises all the great companies that belong to the information technology sector, like Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia, Visa, Mastercard, Adobe, and so on. Many of these are also the top companies companies of the S&P 500, but this is just because the technology sector rocks. And it rocks because, as I always say, one day these companies are going to be the ones that will produce our robots, that will wash our dishes and make us dinner. The evolved versions of our dishwasher and our thermomix. But it also rocks because, as I showed you before, the information technology sector is the one that delivered the highest return over the last 10 years. And because last year it had a terrible return of almost minus 30%, which lets us hope that we are approaching the right time to buy. The second option that you have if you want a growth ETF is, well, the Vanguard Growth ETF. VUG offers a beautiful mix of 247 stocks with an exclusive focus on growth. Oh yeah, growth. So as I said before, you can find any kind of ETF that you want, and in particular this ETF picks for you all the companies in the US stock market with high growth potential. Take away all the companies that are surviving thanks to debt and state help, and all the big companies that are too old to survive, and you'll get a fabulous mix of young, growing companies like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Tesla, Home Depot, and so on. Its annual return since inception in 2004 is around 9.11%, and this considering a drop of 33% in the past year. So not only you're getting growth companies with a lot of potential and a pretty good average return, but we're also in a moment of great discount where you're gonna pay a third less than what you would have paid just a year ago. Now, is a growth market going to do well in the future? <laughs> Nobody knows. They say the value companies might start outperforming growth companies again. And I wanna show you something really interesting that might convince you that this is actually the case. If you take the Russell 1000 indexes growth and value, which are the two most established indexes for growth and value companies, and you compare the overall return since their inceptions in 1979, you'll see they've had nearly identical annual returns from March 2021. 12.1% for growth and 12% for value. But check this out, every day value and growth have taken turns outperforming and underperforming each other's. 79 to 88, value outperformed. 89 to 99, growth outperformed. 2000 to 2008, value outperformed. And in the last decade, growth, of course. You can see the same from this graph that makes us presume that growth is losing its predominance once again. So one solution would be to split your investment between value and growth. 
or to just choose one of them and stick with it. In case you choose value, you can consider the Vanguard Value ETF, VTV, with an expense ratio of 0.04% and a 10 years annualized return of almost 12%. This fund gives you access to 340 value companies in all sectors with a focus on healthcare and financials, like Berkshire Hathaway, United Health Group, Johnson & Johnson, and JP Morgan. Now, some of you might have read the book The Changing World Order by Ray Dalio. If you did, like I'm doing now, it's probably clear as water to you that pretty soon China is gonna kick everybody's butt and take the first place as the strongest economy in the world. Now, it's my bet that in the future, the US is not gonna give us the same high returns that it used to give us on average in the last century. And at some point, I don't know when, but maybe in 10, 15 years, it's gonna be much more profitable to invest in Chinese companies than American ones. Just to give you an idea, I put together all the data of the GDP, which is the gross domestic product from China and from the US, from 1960 to 2021. And you can see how China is getting really, really close. And if you look at the big picture, taking the last 500 years, there is a chart in Ray Dalio's book that shows the relative standing of great empires compared to the others. And the US seems to have touched their peak, while China is ramping up incredibly fast. Who knows, maybe I'm wrong, but still, it might be a really bad idea to invest yourself 100% in the American market. That's why I wanna give you two alternatives that embrace the whole world, and I'm not gonna give you pure Chinese ETF, for two reasons. Number one, the expense ratio of China ETFs is still incredibly high. For example, the SPDR China ETF or the iShares China ETF both have a yearly expense of 0.58%. And number two, it's true that China is getting stronger and stronger, but moving too fast might put you in a market that for the next 10 years might still give you really low returns. So for this reason, my number seven is gonna be the international ETF with ticker VXUS, which is the Vanguard Total International Stock ETF. With a really low expense ratio of 0.07%, this fund is one of your best choices if you wanna broaden your horizons over the US equity markets and wanna put a foot into emerging markets, Europe, the Pacific, Middle East, and others. You're gonna get almost 8,000 different stocks and North America weights here only 7.6%. So you're really covering all your bases when it comes to international markets. Some of the largest holdings are a semiconductor company from Taiwan, as well as Nestlé, Samsung, Tencent Holdings, and so on. The good thing about this index fund is also that it has given a trailing 12-month dividend yield of 3.1%, which is really not bad. And the last option, my number eight, is VT, the Vanguard Total World Stock Index Fund ETF. With 0.07% expense ratio, this ETF is for you if you wanna cover all your bases, because it combines everything we've talked about so far. It's basically a mix of US stocks, Euro Europe, emerging markets, value and growth, and all the sectors you can imagine. VT gives you exposure to the entire world with 9,534 stocks and a balanced portfolio of large cap, growth, value, and dividend companies. And notice that North America is still gonna take around 63% of the portfolio composition, which means that for now, you're still gonna be well covered on the US market, but in case things were to change in the global economy, the composition will be regularly updated. The average return over the last 10 years has been a little over 8%, which is not bad and now you get it for 18% cheaper than a year ago. <laughs> All right guys, these were the ETFs that I suggest you to consider for your investment in 2023. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below and of course if you enjoyed this video and you want more, make me happy by subscribing to my channel and dropping a like to this video. I wish you a great day or evening and as always I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!